what's good cubers it's your boy Matt and today I wanted to take a minute and review Guilds of Ravnica now I know what you're thinking Matt that sets over people have reviewed it it's already come out I don't like to do reviews the moment a set comes out I like to take some time play with the cards see what kind of value they can get uh, play with them in standard see what kind of interactions happen there and then make some final cube determinations and so with that I think it's been long enough, we're going to look back, we're going to look at Guilds of Ravnica, and we're going to see what kind of cube staples we got from this set. Now normally I'd start off showing you all the great white cards that Guilds of Ravnica brought to the cube, but the fact of the matter is, there aren't any. So we're going straight to blue, and we're going to take a minute and look at my boy, Murmuring Mystic, or who my daughter affectionately calls the Birdman. So Birdman is three and a blue for a 1-5 human wizard that says whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell create a 1-1 one, one bird illusion creature token with fly. Now the 1-5 body is really relevant in a cube. This guy is just a stone wall for aggro decks. Stands in front of them, bring your goblin rabble master through this, ha ha! Well the card he's most similar to that is in cubes now is Talran the Sky Summoner. Now, Talran makes two two drakes. So let's look at the two of them laid next to each other. Talran's a little harder to cast, but he makes bigger drakes. Murmuring Mystic is easier to cast with a better body, but he makes one one birds. Actually, I think this one kind of comes down to preference. I think I'm going to move to play in the Murmuring Mystic just because I think that body, that five toughness, is really relevant to slowing down burn decks and most blue decks would love to have a card like this. But I can see keeping Talran because you like the aggressive drakes, the 2-2 two -two drakes. I can, I can see the value behind those guys. So I definitely think you play one or the other. You probably don't want to play both though. I know cube is a great place for redundant effects, but I think here you don't want a redundant effect here. You want just one of these guys unless your cube is getting kind of big, in which case then you probably want to play both. Um, you know, if you're around that 450 to 720 range, then you've probably got room for both. But if you're playing a tight 360 to 400 card cube, I think you have to play one or the other. Still, both really good cards for cube. Murmuring Mystic is a great addition. Now that's it for blue. Let's take a minute and look at black and the Plague Crafter. Two in a black, human shaman. When Plague Crafter enters the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature or a planeswalker each player who can't discards a card. Now Plague Crafter is basically a copy of the Fleshbag Marauder. They got the same casting cost, Plague Crafter's got a slightly better body, but Plague Crafter also hits Planeswalkers, which feels really important in Cube, where most colors have a couple. Furthermore, if they don't have anything to sack at all, it's hand destruction to boot. Now I know he's not zombie tribal so he doesn't synergize with cards like the grave crawler but compared to the flesh bag marauder this is an easy upgrade so this is a chance for you to replace your flesh bag marauder with the plague crafter or again if you're in a larger cube you could play both let's look at another black card the doom whisperer three double black nightmare demon flying trample 6-6, six, six, and you could pay two life and surveil two. Man, Black just got lucky in Guilds of Ravnica. Alright, let's compare Doom Whisperer to the cards that he's similar to. Oh wait, there, there aren't any. Yeah, this card's an easy include. Now, if we look at the other Black 5 drops that are common in cube, Shriek Maw, Evokes, Kills Creatures, really strong. Uh, Great Merchant of Asphodel, you know, draining life out of players, gaining life, really, really good, but they don't finish games. When this guy comes down, if your opponent doesn't have an answer, they're on a three-turn clock if you haven't hit him at all. Yeah, Doom Whisperer, he, he's, he's just that good. Pl play, play this card. Um, the last thing I do want to point out, though, is I noticed that players who play Doom Whisperer are reticent to use his Surveil ability. I mean, unless you are really low on life, Use the Surveil, get the card advantage, maybe even find some protection from Do for Doom Whisperer. That's how you close out a game. Don't be afraid to Surveil, guys. Play this card. Next, we're going to move to red and look at what is probably considered the most included cube card 
from Guilds of Ravnica, and that's Goblin Crater Maker. Now, Crater Maker is one in a red to get a Goblin Warrior with the 2 2 body, right? So, solid aggro body there with the abilities pay one, sack the Crater Maker, and Crater Maker will either deal two damage to a creature or destroy target colorless non land permanent. Now, the most similar creature I could find to Crater Maker is actually Torchfiend, who doesn't see a lot of cube play. So part of me wonders, like, why does this Crater Maker see all the play that it, may, that it sees? Well, does he kill artifacts? Yeah, and that's a big upside. He also kills huge colorless threats like Ugin, Karn, Emrakul, whatever big, mean, nasty spaghetti monsters flying around in the cube. Um, so all that's great, and you can sack him to blow up another creature. But actually, I think Crater Maker is just okay. I mean, yes, he provides that flexibility that a red aggro deck would want, but we weren't playing Torch Fiend anyway. I mean, play this card, it's a good two drop, especially in a larger cube, you got plenty of room, but mostly, I don't know that I think that he's one of the best cards from Guilds of Ravnica. Give him a try, see what you think. I'm betting more often than not, you don't sack him to kill an artifact, and he doesn't run into Embrakul or Ugin as often as you would think. Let's look at another red creature and one of my favorite creatures from Guilds of Ravnica, the Legion War Boss. Now, two and a red gets you a goblin soldier with a 2 2 body with Mentor. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, you get a 1 1 red goblin creature token. That creature gains haste until the end of, end of turn and attacks this combat if able. Now, this card is basically a copy of Goblin Raffle Master. They do a lot of really similar things, right? Same casting cost. Each one makes a goblin, the goblins have haste, all, and Rapple Master makes all goblin creatures you control attack, not just the token. And then he gets a buff, a plus one, plus oh, until the end of turn for every other attacking goblin. And he's got the same body. So, really, these, thing, these two creatures have so much in common that you could play either either or again, or both, right? Any aggro deck is going to want both of these guys. I've even seen a Just Guy Control build, shout out to Jacob, who used Warboss as a finisher, putting him down on the board once the board was empty, and putting his opponent on a really fast clock. So, you could play one, you could play the other. Warboss is actually a really cheap replacement for Rabble Master if you want to go that route. Or, you could do like me. I think I'm going to play both. At least for a little while. I'm enjoying a red tokens theme in my cube right now. And red and white Boros tokens. It feels really strong. I really like where it's at. You could play cards like Hanwar Garrison as well. Although maybe three for you is too many. But yeah. The War Boss. Give him a try. Now let's look at the only green creature Guilds brings to the cube. And that's the Pelt Collector. For a green you get a 1-1 Elf Warrior. Whenever another creature you control enters the battlefields or dies, that part's important. If that creature's power is greater than Pelt Collector, put a plus one plus one on the Pelt Collector. As long as Pelt Collector has three or more plus one plus one counters on it, it has Trample. So Pelt Collector is basically Experiment 1, right? A really popular cube card in his own right. They have the same casting cost, the same body, both of them trigger off creatures, creatures entering the battlefield. But Pelt Collector actually gets to trigger twice when the creature comes in and when it dies. And I find that more often than not, when you play a creature bigger than Pelt Collector, they tend to remove that creature first and Pelt Collector gets to trigger the second time. But Experiment 1 does have the ability to remove counters and regenerate, which could be really important. Which one do you play? The answer is both, or none. If you're playing a green aggro strategy in your queue, you play both these cards, hands down. This is, Pelt Collector is now your new best friend. He's your best one drop, right? But if you're like me, I play a green ramp section in my queue. Landmar Elves, Birds of Paradise, Wall of Blossoms, which by the way, triggers Experiment 1. Heads up, that's a cool combo. But I'm playing green ramp, so I don't need the Pelt Collector. There aren't a lot of things to trigger him in my queue. So, green ramp? No. Green aggro, yes! Okay, here's where a set like Guilds of Ravnica shines. They bring us some great new multicolored cards for cube. Let's start with Boros. 
Let's look at Aurelia, the Exemplar of Justice. Two, red and white for a legendary creature angel. Two, five, flying mentor. At the beginning of combat on your turn, choose up to one target creature you control. And until the end of turn, that creature gets plus two, plus O. Oh. Gains trample if it's red, and gains vigilance if it's white. Holy cow, can we please put some more text on this card? Goodness gracious. Alright, so Aurelia is definitely playable in Q. But you got a player at like the top of like a Boros aggro deck or a red aggro deck. In my experience, she does better with decks that are more red or evenly balanced than she does in, in decks that lean white. The trample seems to be more relevant than the vigilance. Now, that being said, she is still really good. And at worst, she's a 4-5 trampling, vigilant, flying angel soaring across the battlefield bringing justice and righteousness as she comes. This card is totally worth including in your cube. Most Boros sections of the cubes feature a lot of spells, a Johnny, and a Kithkin, right? Aurelia is definitely worth testing. Strong body, even good on defense, which protects Boros players from crackback because most of the time all their creatures are tapped out anyway. So Aurelia, definitely worth playtesting in your cube. So long as the power level in your cube isn't too busted, she's going to be a nice fit. Now at this point I should probably take a moment and mention that whether or not you include these multicolored cards is going to depend on how many multicolored slots you have in your cube. Let's start with Aurelia. If you only give three multicolored slots in your cube, odds are Aurelia doesn't make the cut. Right, you're playing a Johnny or Nahiri, Boros Charm, Lightning Helix. Aurelia is just not as good as those cards. But if you have five slots, maybe six, then Aurelia is definitely a card you're looking for. And the same with most of these multicolored spells. Only one or two of them are auto includes. Next up is Demir's offering to the cube, Thief of Sanity. One, blue and a black for a 2-2 two -two Spectre with flying. Whenever Thief of Sanity deals combat damage to a player, look at the top three cards of that player's library. Exile one of them face down, then put the rest into their graveyard. For as long as that card remains exiled, you may look at it, you may cast it, you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast that spell. Okay, so let me tell you, your friends, they're not going to like Thief of Sanity. But you know what? You don't need friends. You got Thief of Sanity. Thief of Sanity is your friend now. So... Thief of Sanity steals cards off the top of our opponent's decks and lets us pick from them and then later cast whatever card that is, even if Thief of Sanity is no longer on the battlefield. Now, let's not kid ourselves, this card is basically the Night Veil Spectre, but the cost is lower, the bodies are very similar, both fly, but the fact that you get to look at the top three cards instead of the top one is king. Being able to filter through three cards, you're almost never going to miss. You're going to find something playable. The real problem with Thief of Sanity is that the Demir section of the cube is so crowded. Hostage Taker, Baleful Strix, Silumgar. There's so many great cards. Scorpion God. Oh my gosh, that section is so crowded. If you can find room, Thief of Sanity is totally cubable. But if you can't, well... That's understandable too. Sometimes I just like to rotate cards in and out for flavor. Maybe this is a card you do that with. Maybe this is a card where your your friends like the drafts in your cube and they're like, "Hey, what's this? This is a new thing." And then a few months go by, you pull them out, you throw something else in just to keep things fresh. Point is, Thief of Sanity, good card. Your multicolored section is going to have to be really big if you're going to try and squeeze them in. Dang, this is a lot of cards. We're almost there, guys. Just hang with me. Let's look at Night of Autumn. One a green and a white for a creature dryad knight, 2-1. But when Knight of Autumn enters the battlefield, choose one. Put two plus one plus one counters on Knight of Autumn. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. And lastly, gain for life. Yeah, she does it all. Now, Knight of Autumn is basically Quasali Pride Mage. I bet you knew I was going to say that, didn't you? Right? She's got a slightly higher casting cost and a worse body. But she just does everything. She could be a 4-3. She could remove an artifact or an enchantment. She could gain life, which is crucial versus aggro. Yeah, Knight of Autumn. She's one of the best Selesnia cards in cube, period.
Play this card. No, no, seriously. We're, we're, we're done talking. Play Knight of Autumn. Pull out the Pride Mage. We love him. He's sweet. His time has come. Knight of Autumn time. Make this happen. She's really good. Lastly, we have Assassin's Trophy. No surprise to anybody, right? Black and a green for an instant. Destroy target permanent and opponent controls. Its controller may search their library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield, and then shuffle their library. Now what is this card like? Basically every Golgari card in cube ever printed, right? Golgari is just full of some of the best removal in cube. Abrupt decay, destroy something. Anything you want, so long as it costs three or less. Maelstrom Pulse, destroy something, right? And all other permanents with the same name as that something, but sorcery speed, though. So, I think Assassin's Trophy is definitely an include in cube. The question is, what do you take out? Because the last thing you want is for your Golgari section to be nothing but removal spells. We haven't even talked about Pernicious Deed, right? So, you can't have four removal spells in a guild slot in your cube. Now, Assassin's Trophy is the best of the bunch, alright? I know that Maelstrom Pulse looks better because you don't ramp them, but normally in cube, the ramp isn't that big of a deal, and instant speed can be, just be so clutch. It's just so clutch. Someone sneaks, sneak and shows Emrakul into play, and you have to wait until next turn to cast Maelstrom Pulse, you're dead, alright? You're dead. Instant speed matters. So, play Assassin's Trophy, obviously. If you haven't picked one up right now, by now because the cost was restrictive, well, standard is bottom and out, so now's a great time to pick one up. Play Assassin's Trophy. It's really good. And don't play five removal spells in the Golgari slot, all right? Try some other stuff. Play Marin. Play Vraska Relic Seeker. I know they're a little overcosted, and Marin doesn't get the same value, but I've seen too many cubes with too much just straight Golgari removal, all right? Give your Golgari players something else to play with, okay? I'm going to get off my soapbox, and I'm going to turn this video off. Let me know what you think in the comments. Tell me if you agree, disagree. Did I miss a card? Is there a card you'd like me to look at when we evaluate Ravnica Allegiance? Is there a card you want me to look at for card of the week? Make a comment below. We'll respect your request. Until then, keep cubing, my friends.